<coughs> I'd like to open the uh, September 7th meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Uh, Commissioner Real is absent uh, today. Uh, Commissioner Campadelli and I are here. Um, we are audio and video recording this meeting. At this time, I'd like to ask the public for any comment on any items that aren't on the agenda that anybody would like to address at this time. Seeing none, I'll move on to the first item, number five, application for addition to Arts Night Out. Short-term license, Doctors Clayton, Kleinman, and Canby at 243 King Street. Do we have the application for this? Hi. Hi, Doctor. I'm Sue Phillips, and I'm the office manager okay. at Clayton Community Dental. All right. Mm -hmm. All those doctors are thinking you might. Be I wish. <laughs> so you will um, uh, subscribe for the Arts Night Out Friday schedule that um, yeah. the arts organization has along with the others. Yeah, we hope to begin in October. And what we do is we have patient works of art on display. Uh -huh. And we have hors d'oeuvres and beer and wine. Okay. And we have an employee that is um, used to work at Fitzwillies who does our bartending. Oh, so that person is tips trained? Yes. Super. I have a clue. Six application for short term wine and malt license, Zoll Cellar Winery on October 1st at Wood Park. Hi, you are Hi. Frank How Zoll. Do you do? I am Frank Zoll, I own Zoll Cellar's Winery. Can you tell yeah. us what your event is? And I'm seeking a, a one day license for Megan's Light. It's a uh, fundraiser at Wood Park. We did it last year as well. Um, they do a 5K. Now, this year we're doing a family uh, fun run as well. Uh, after it, and then I would be operating a, a wine and a malt. Uh, uh, I'll have beer and wine for sale, okay. basically, and from the hours of 10 to 2. I don't anticipate it really going that long, but I didn't want to put in a license for 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a little early. But the registration does start at 8. You know, the race runs at 11, so if there's you know some people that don't want to run or maybe you want something with lunch, um, that would be the <clears throat> I noticed you have serving training then. Yeah, I, yeah, I own the winery. My wife, uh, who's the, uh, the reason we're doing all this, so did it with me. But yeah, I've been, we've been doing it for several years, these different off-site events and so on. So I'll basically be getting uh, beer from a distributor um, and my products as well. Where's it being served? Um, the Dow Pavilion. Right. So we'll you know, post it off with the coffee table around and create a, a small area. Okay. But people were contained. Alright. Do you have any questions? Who's the distributor? For beer? Yeah. Uh, to be determined. Oh. I, so I, I know a lot of people, so sometimes they'll throw me some samples. There's not that many people that attend that want to judge. Most people are going for the 5K. Um, it has to be somebody on the ABCC list. Who's absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then I self distribute my own product, so I would be the primary distributor. Okay, I'll make a motion we approve the uh, short-term wine and malt license for Zoltz Miller to one in October 1st. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Um, you can give it to him. Just, um, again, the distributor either has to be, you know. Can you just email me? Sure. Thank you so much. Item. Number seven, this is a hearing for an application for a new annual all alcohol restaurant license per, X, uh, per chapter 109 of the Acts of 2016 for Sylvester's Fine Foods at 111 Pleasant Street, Northampton, Mass. Uh, just for the record, if you could identify yourselves. I'm Mo McGinnis from Sylvester's. Ben Peter St. Martin, Sylvester's. And, um, 
So, um, you've been serving wine and malt at Sylvester's for a good long while. Yeah. Not sure how many years, but I'm going to guess seven years. Um, I'm not sure where to start when it's going to question. What's going to be the biggest, uh, is there going to be any changes, on, you know, additional to that? I mean, what are some of the alcohol things? This Blood and Mary's on Sunday, and we might have early dinner, but we'll close early. Oh. That's about it. And right now, you guys are just breakfast and lunch? Breakfast and lunch, right. But if you come in for lunch, you can get a martini now. If, if, if we get it. I was like, really? Already? <laughs> <laughs> it's always on the back of my mind. We actually have people ask for Bloody Marys every day, and especially yeah. on Saturdays and sure. Sundays. And uh, <clears throat> we actually make Bloody Marys now with Saki, which is quite good. And we, so with this license, we can actually make a new Bloody Mary. Saki Bloody Mary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. It doesn't quite satisfy people. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, so, how many nights a week do you think you'll be open for dinner? Probably seven. We are open seven days <coughs> a week. Yeah, we'll probably do seven to seven or eight to eight. It won't be anything later than that. Would... So you close pretty early for dinner? Very early. Okay. Yeah. So, because that's our niche market is just the people that are working after work, get something quick, and go home. Okay. Is that what time you close now? Right now we close at three. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so because really, really we never had a liquor license, so it's, you know, we didn't really... Well, really make Roberto's honest and give him some competition, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a different market. Yeah. I know. Those people at Roberto's are... Oh, they're, the they're tough. They're tough. I don't think we've changed it, so it's not... But do we have it? Sure, I don't have it to you. So you're not doing any renovations, we have the existing site? The only thing we're doing is just, you know, making it better. I mean, it needs a new floor, it, you know, every five years we do renovations like that, but nothing major. Everything's staying. I assume it's, you already have a service bar. We do, we, we already do. have a bar, it just needs to be um, accommodation made, accommodations made for service liquor in addition right. to bearing wine, which is not a big deal. Right. Our staff's already trained. Um, you know, majority of our staff, staff are tips trained. We also have an in-house training. Okay. It really isn't going to be that exciting. Because no. no one's really going to have a martini with a waffle. But for those few <laughs> lunches that somebody might want a BLT and a martini, that's what we'll have. I, I may try that. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, did we get the cards back on the 16th seat? Yes. Okay. And, uh, yes, okay. um, I have no other questions at this time. Is there anyone here uh, who wishes <coughs> to speak about this application? Okay, seeing none. Did we get any letters or correspondence from any nearby educational or spiritual institutions? No. Seeing as how we, uh, this is within 500 feet of uh, certain educational spiritual institutions, and whereas all of Butters were notified, but having heard no objection to this license, I move that we find that uh, uh, the granting of this license will not be detrimental to the educational and spiritual activities of any nearby uh, establishment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, And um, before we move on to the um, uh, to the vote, yes. this uh, license, you know as well as anybody, yes. uh, has the special restrictions in terms of uh, Chapter 106, and the um, license cannot be moved from this premise. Uh, if you decide to stop operating the license. Uh, at this premise, or give up the premise yourselves, your own, uh, your own outfit here, uh, the license would revert to the city. 
So uh, unlike other alcohol licenses, this one is, uh, has those restrictions. Okay. So, um, so uh, having no other questions uh, about this application, I'll make a motion we grant under the terms of uh, Chapter 109 of the Acts of 2016 a license to uh, Sylvester's Fine Foods at 111 Pleasant Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you grant the form? A little bit of history, oh, yes. 25 and years trying to get a wicked license. <laughs> to add the yeah, uh, issue of 43 <laughs> to the ADCC. Thank you. All seconds. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Good luck, you guys. Item number eight, application for short-term wine and malt for Blue Paws, Inc., DBA, JJ's Tavern, uh, 99 Main Street, Florence, submitted by John Newman, October 8th, for the October Florence, uh, Octoberfest. Like we said last year, too. Right. Octoberfest, yes. Okay. John Newman, John, John Newman, Paws, Inc., JJ's Tavern. Okay. And where are you doing this? In the uh, rear parking lot of the facility. Okay. Uh, you did it last year. So yep, it's our third year. And uh, the uh, uh, the beneficiaries of Florence Civic Association. Yeah. And um, how will the um, uh, uh, wine and malt beverages be supplied to the event? From commercial and wine distributing. And the uh, it's a different premise, you know, to keep the, the supply you can't run. Yep, it's a separate invoice. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. You know this stuff. Um, so we have the fee. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. It's pretty identical to the last two years. Yeah, nothing changed. Okay. Yep. This item is an application for short-term wine and malt licenses for the Academy of Music mm -hmm. for October 1st, 2016, October 28th, November 3rd, and October 16th. Correct. So you have four events, and uh, they're all wine and beer. Correct. And uh, is there any uh, difference in the proposed manner of service of alcohol? No difference. At these And you applied for a fee waiver for these four. Yes, you have. Did you have any? I'm sorry, your, your name again? Deborah J. Anthony. Okay. I'm the executive director. Okay. Uh, general questions. Uh, I will make a motion then to approve the application for the <coughs> line of malt licenses for the academy with a fee waiver 
for October 1st, October 16th, October 28th, and November 3rd. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item number 10, application for short-term wine and malt for the wine, White Lion Brewing Company uh, for October 23rd. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is for the Happy Valley Half Marathon of Wood Park on uh, October 23rd. Hi, could you identify yourself? Good day, yes. Record? My name is Ray Berry. I'm the president of the White Lion Brewing Company. Uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm sorry, where? Springfield. Okay. And just tell us about this event you're doing. So we're happy to uh, partner with 5050 uh, 5050 Fitness and Nutrition out of Hadley, Mass. Uh, and uh, if we're successful today, uh, we'll, the, all the proceeds will go to Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Hampshire County. Uh, it's a one-day event. It's on Sunday where they expect 400 runners. Uh, they have all the proper permitting, etc. already set up. Uh, it's for Sunday the 23rd, if my memory serves me correct. And uh, we're looking to pour from the gazebo area, duly noted on the map. Uh, so I understand that um, we uh, have to um, have a controlled environment, uh, which we'll be able to demonstrate. Uh, all of our staff is still certified, and we are currently distributed through Williams, uh, so we're very familiar with the, with the process. Okay, all your staff is certified, that's correct. Yes. Excellent. Um, So a controlled environment, you already mentioned that, and we need a fee. And sisters. Okay. It appears we have everything. Do you have any questions? Uh, I don't. Mr. Know. Barry? No. <coughs> um, I will make a motion then uh, to uh, approve the application for short term. Uh, wine and malt license from the White Lion Brewing Company for October 23rd at Blood Park. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm. Item number 11, application for short-term wine and malt license for New England Deaconess Association, DDA Rockridge, uh, at Coles Meadow Road. And this is for uh, October 20th, a fundraiser in their large community room. Hi, could you identify uh, yourself for the record? Rachel Kenya, food service director. Sorry? Rachel Kenya, food service director for Rockridge. Okay, tell us about your event. Uh, so it's a um, award ceremony. Um, for the Violet, um, Violet Community Enrichment Award, plus we do a fundraiser, um, our yearly big fundraiser for Rockridge. Um, all proceeds for a nonprofit go to transportation for us. We did, the, um, did this previous two years. And uh, you're using Table and Vine as your distributor. Yes, sir. Yep. That's very good. And just tell us about the uh, people who will be serving. Um, there will be one woman serving, uh, Karen, and she is tip certified in SurSafe. And all staff working at the event will also be SurSafe certified. Are you adding? 
Well, <clears throat> we're adding um, another 12 units to our memory support, and then we're doing independent rentals for moderate income, and that's 24 units. Uh, so they don't uh, have to join the continuum of care community? Yeah, it's all, I mean, it's all one campus, but our mission really is to serve everybody in need. Um, we do a memory support, we do an assisted living, we do a retirement community. So it's one of those things where either people have too much money or not enough. Um, so the middle class was really kind of struggling with the need there. So we decided to uh, do some market research and we uh, found that independent uh, rentals for moderate income people over 62 <coughs> were the need in the area. So that's what we went for. And that says the first ones of these that you have there? Yes. <coughs> Just looking at their certificate of liabilities expired, but then there's another insurance sheet in the back, so I don't know if that's. Yeah, it's got. Is it, is it enforced? Is your insurance enforced? <coughs> yes. Yeah, there's another sheet. Okay. All right, join the motion. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, make a motion to. Short term wine and malt for the New England Business Association PBA Property Retirement Community, 25 Colesville Road, uh, in the large community in New England. Okay, second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay, thank thanks you very so much. much. Item number 12, application for new annual all alcohol restaurant license per Chapter 109 of the Acts of 2016 for Rios Vajas, DBA B. Papas, 7 Strong Ave, Northampton, Mass. Um, Mr. Gove. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Ms. Murphy. Uh, as Mr. Um, Rosen just stated, we're here requesting the issuance of an annual all alcohol uh, liquor license for Rios Access. LLC DBA visas half us pursuant to the act that was cited uh, with me is Sebastian Pikatowski, uh, the new manager of record of Rios by Access LLC as approved by this commission at your last meeting. Uh, if I could, I'd actually like to start by addressing uh, what I suspect would be at least my concern if I was on that side of the table, and that's just the many things that you may have, uh, or that I may have read or heard about this uh, restaurant. <coughs> Uh, and from the standpoint of my clients, uh, this publicity has been very positive and very important for them. Uh, part of their job is to help build excitement and energy about the downtown area, about the Strong Ave area, and also about their restaurant themselves, <clears throat> including for all the new things that they hope to do here at this restaurant. But part of their job, and all of my job, is to make sure that these changes are being done correctly uh, and only after all required approvals are being obtained, including from this commission. So I just want to assure the Commission that nobody here is jumping ahead, despite what may have been publicized or um, marketed out to the public in the past. To be completely upfront, there are some intention for cha some changes. Uh, Juan Suarez is the sole owner of this licensee, Rios Bay Access LLC, but it's no secret that he'd like to back away from the restaurant. Mr. Pikatowski, Benson Hyde, and Chef John Adler have executed an agreement to purchase 100% of the ownership of Rios by Access LLC, DBA, the visa stop us from Mr. Suarez. But this agreement, of course, is completely contingent on your approval uh, of that change, and we expect to be back before you in October or November seeking a transfer of that stock at the time for your consideration. Likewise, uh, my client would like to look to add an outdoor patio space uh, to the back of the building, but we would be applying for an alteration of the license premises before that happens. Each step of the way, all of the changes that they're looking to make or have talked about making will be looking for approvals from the commission first. So, uh, before so I'd like to turn to the application itself, but before I do two procedural issues or quick procedural issues, first, Mr. Suarez uh, has actually been out of the country for the last few weeks, uh, so at, uh, we have not yet received his original signed pages of the application. Uh, we are expecting his applicant statement, the personal information form, the Corey request form and the consent of manager authorizing this application, all of which he approved us to do, uh, and we are expecting signed originals of those any day. 
In addition, we have not yet received back the green card for the mailing that was made to the Roman Catholic Church. So I'll be requesting proof of delivery of that to, from the post office and provide, and then prepare the affidavit. But in the meantime, and to save on time and efficiency, uh, we're requesting the commission approve the application today, pending receipt of those two items, which I'll deliver to Mr. Murphy as soon as possible. For the application itself, you may be familiar with the space. Uh, it's been in existence for quite some time. Uh, some, uh, some equipment and cosmetic renovations have made a difference in how it looks, including an uh, open opening of the kitchen, uh, making the kitchen visible to guests. The first floor is approximately 2,800 square feet, on the first, uh, including a bar area, a seating and dining area, kitchen, bathrooms. Uh, there's one main entrance and exit, but four emergency exits. Uh, the occupancy of the property uh, from my clients is pursuant to a lease with the owner, which was attached to the application. That includes a five-year term with two five-year extensions. As I mentioned, Juan Suarez remains the sole owner of uh, the licensee. He has no interest in any other licenses, has had no suspensions or revocations of any licenses in the past, and is also a U.S. citizen. Renovations to the space, which are directly related to the issuance of this license, are really minimal, limited only to additional shelves and racks uh, behind the bar, uh, and there is no loan or request <coughs> pledge for this application. Uh, Sebastian Fikatowski will remain as the manager of record. Uh, his information and resume is attached again uh, and shows that his credentials are, I would suggest, as impeccable as they were six weeks ago when this commission approved him as manager of record. So, a couple of things, uh, a couple of other things about the restaurant. The intention uh, is for the restaurant to be open from 8 a.m. in the morning until 2 a.m. at night, uh, in the morning, uh, seven days per week. Every day, the menu will consist of, uh, in the morning, a cafe menu, including breakfast, cereals actually baked on site, uh, pastries, uh, both sweet and savory pastries for breakfast, and also tartines from uh, Hungry Ghost Bakery. The lunch menu will include sandwiches, uh, salads, and soups, and the late night menu will include chips, pastries, uh, including pork buns, cheeses, and select tapas. Uh, there will also be what you, I was, was described to me as a staff dinner. Uh, which was described as a hearty and inexpensive meal with both meat and vegetarian options that will be created each day and available throughout the lunch and dinner periods. That's seven days a week. Five days a week, Wednesday through Sunday, there will be a full dinner menu between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. That will include a selection of meats and cheeses, uh, as well as appetizers, one bite plate, share plates, and other tapas, uh, as well as meat and vegetarian entrees, uh, and a dessert menu as well. Uh, the drink menus uh, will, the intention is for the drink menus uh, to be very high class and to have a lot of unique drinks uh, using local ingredients, juices, and inventive flavorings for sweeteners and acidity. Uh, there's no intention to install any soda guns. There's no intention to have any chilled liquor machines or anything of that type. Uh, as Mr. Krikowski would tell you, uh, the target demographic here is really women and dating couples, 35 and older. Uh, and both the food and cocktail menus are going to reflect that. Uh, staffing for the restaurant uh, will include, on a rotating basis, uh, three managers and hostesses, uh, a contingent of front of house trainees and people working in a cafe bar, three or four servers, uh, three or four cooks, uh, dishwashers and table bussers, uh, two or three bartenders, and three uh, front door staff to check IDs and provide security. Uh, all front of house staff will be receiving tips training will be a requirement of their employment. And in a positive step, I would suggest for the industry, all employees are also going to be receiving uh, employment contracts, uh, health insurance, and paid vacations. Uh, final approvals uh, and discussions are taking place with the Board of Health. Uh, in the building department, the Board of Health, uh, last, the last Board of Health hearing is uh, taking place next week. The timeline <coughs> uh, is for the restaurant to be opened no later than Tuesday, September 20th, under the current wine and malt license, uh, with the hope for the full license to issue shortly thereafter. So I would sorry, uh, repeat that last. With the with the hope that the full license would issue shortly thereafter, but with the the it's opening under the wine and malt license, it, we expect that to be no later than Tuesday, September 20th. And when you say shortly thereafter. Well, in, in due course, I suppose. Okay. Not, not shortly thereafter, but in due course. But, so, the, um, as you know, the um, application, whenever it is approved by us, then needs to go through the ABCC process, oh, which, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, can take a little bit of time. So, yeah. uh, if you plan to 
open for wine and malt under your existing license uh, September 20th. There's no way it's going to open shortly thereafter. Shortly, Same perhaps. Was, the pick, yeah. yeah, perhaps shortly was the wrong word. But uh, um, in, in due course, when it's in due course, yes, that's that's a much better cool. phrase. Uh, and with that, I'd, uh, I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Pikadowski is here to answer any questions as well about the restaurant that the commissioners may have. Well, uh, just a couple of things, Attorney Go. We have um, normally to hear from the um, uh, from the licensee, which in this case would be Juan Suarez. Mm -hmm. He is not here. Uh, I note, though, that you have a, um, uh, an act of the corporation empowering Mr. Pikatowski mm -hmm. to speak in his place That's right. for the purposes of this application. And, and for the purposes of this application, I'm serving as attorney for the licensee. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, um, uh, the matter of the uh, missing documents, however, though, um, I, I think we would need those in order to finally make an approval here, as well as the, the uh, I know it's a small matter, and usually it amounts to nothing, but we would need the uh, uh, return from the abutter of the, of course. the Catholic Church, because mm -hmm. we can't grant a license without making a 16C finding. Of course. So the, um, uh, there are a couple of missing documents we absolutely need here in order to proceed mm -hmm. before we approve the uh, the application. My only hope is that we would not have to wait until the next hearing for the application to be provided. As I stated, um, both the, the form documents are included, were included in the application. You can see exactly what we expect Mr. Suarez to provide original signatures on. Uh, and we expect those any day, as well as proof of service um, on the Roman Catholic Church. It was unfortunate we haven't yet received the green card. Uh, but we ask or hope that we would not have to wait an entire month before that could be sent on to the ABCC. The, um, let me return to one thing you said um, before. Um, you intend to return to this body uh, later on, you said October or November, to, um, to then alter the, um, the corporate makeup of this um, enterprise. Um, Mr. Suarez will be withdrawing from the corporation that time. The intention, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely prepared to speak to the uh, purchase agreement, but as I stated, it is absolutely contingent on the approval of the license commission as it should be and the ABCC. Um, but the intention is for Mr. Suarez to transfer his ownership to uh, the three gentlemen that I mentioned. The, um, uh, I'll let um, Mr. the only question for you. Um, well, the fact that we don't have the paperwork nor the actual licensee uh, is highly unusual. Um, we have approved things contingent on receiving such things. Um, uh, and I do apologize for that. I've been in almost consistent or constant contact with uh, Mr. Suarez's personal attorney, um, and he has consistently been. Uh, assured by Mr. Suarez that they were FedEx from his location. Uh, again, I think he was out of the country, uh, and we were expecting them any day, uh, and have been for about a week and a half now. Um, and I checked with him just today, and also have been, you know, received the same result. Where is his attorney located? Uh, in Uh It's a gentleman by the name of Philip, I'm going to butcher his last name, Cicerelli, Cicerelli, I think. Butcher the Italian guy. Um, the, um, uh, there's one other matter, and uh, you know what it is. Um, earlier, I believe you were acquainted with an opinion from the city solicitor about the terms of this uh, chapter 109 mm -hmm. uh, and how that would preclude um, the um, granting of a license under the highly restrictive nature of that special act. Sure. Um, uh, we, um, 
we are in a, in a murky area here for for us. Mm -hmm. We would rely on counsel to tell us course, exactly how to proceed. Uh, and I wonder if you had received any further information about or have a, a further opinion on the matter of such restrictions. Well, the, the conversation and the opinion that I have received from Attorney Sewell has specifically to do with the very strict restrictions um, placed by the statute. Uh, on the entity itself and the use of the Rias by Access LLC doing business as. <coughs> um, and my clients, you know, see significant value in the name of Visa Office, even, you know, all the time they receive phone calls from people looking for a Visa Office or asking about a Visa Office. So they entirely uh, intend to continue utilizing that name, doing business as a Visa Office. Um, I will say that their intention from the beginning has been to emphasize, or at least one of the problems that they saw with the operations that were occurring uh, was that there was difficulty in attracting people to the building and to the foot traffic. So they'll be operating, doing business as a visa stop us. In fact, just today I saw the new sign that's going to be going up with the visa stop us. They will be emphasizing the address, seven strong ad, um, but they're doing business as, uh, the licensee will continue to be Reus by Access LLC, doing business as a visa stop us, completely, I would suggest, in compliance with the statute. And I have been in touch with Attorney Seawald about that and would intend to con to continue that conversation in the future. Uh, we have received no further communication on this except for that one uh, memo, which I, again, I believe you saw that, right? I did see that. What, what was directed to us mm -hmm. at the time. Um, so based on that, um, uh, what you're presenting here today on the surface, without uh, delving into the legal aspect of it, the application uh, by Mr. Suarez here for his alcohol, alcohol license to continue doing business as it is by just LLC. By the way, that's, that's the thing. It's by just. Oh, have I been much pronouncing it? It doesn't matter. See, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an obscure. It's not just the Italian name. It's an obscure. <laughs> And dying European language. It's going. Uh, I apologize. I, no, no, I, no, 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 no. I'm not. I, do I look like I'm in that part of Spain? Anyway, um, the um, the the intention of Mr. Suarez to continue operating as that entity, doing business as Edith Tapas at Seven Strong Avenue, is borne out in your application and in Mr. Pikotowski's actions to this point. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I believe um, that the uh, special terms of Chapter 109 have, are, appear to be in compliance to me, barring further um, information or direction from uh, counsel or from the KBCC. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Campanelli, any thoughts on that particular point? Yeah. This is, <coughs> this is a new one for me by far, so mm -hmm. I'm not that way. Especially with somebody being absent. You know, we're looking for, I understand. He did. He did, he did empower Mr. Pikachu to So, only well, that he's got that legal document, but I don't know that there's... Well, that's why my question to you earlier is, is there harm in granting a contingency at this point? So, I assume it's so that they can continue the business, or... I mean, not that they can do anything, but I'll... Well, he can open, he can open under the wine and malt license. Mm -hmm. Right. In any event, he can open yeah. <coughs> tomorrow mm -hmm. if you're ready to serve. So that's not the problem. Yeah. It's the so approval so which no. starts the clock for the ABCC oh, approval. Right. Right. Our hope is that we'll have all the documents into Ms. Murphy no later than Monday, at which point we would hope that the that the, the approved application contingent on receiving those documents could be sent to the ABC rather than having to wait to come back for uh, a second year. So in other words, we approve this uh, today and by Wednesday of next week, the latest, you receive everything needed, it goes off the ABCC right away. 
that is waiting that next 30 if we vote to, yes if we vote to yeah, approve I mean, but we'd have to take a vote um, also uh, however and we can do this um, uh, I think without meeting again on the, on the 16C funding because that is also necessary here for this to proceed. Uh, I would certainly take any guidance and appreciate any consideration to just to move the process along for the commissioners. Right. However, however if we were if we were to hold this over till the October meeting, can you describe for me uh, any difficulty that would uh, uh, that your client would uh, encounter in well, that decision? As someone who's practiced in front of the ABCC or with the ABCC for a number of years, I would suggest or uh, at least uh, think. Uh, that the sooner the better, and the uh, three-month, I mean, a three-week uh, delay can sometimes be expanded uh, by the by the uh, timeline in Boston. And I would urge us to, I would urge the commission, excuse me, to uh, push this to Boston as quickly as possible. Um, I guess. Yeah. No, 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 I understand that, and we can, we have in the past um, uh, uh, proved things mm -hmm. contingent upon receiving certain things. Mm -hmm. It is highly unusual not to have the uh, licensee himself here. However, given that he is, Mr. Swarov has empowered Mr. Pikutowski to speak on his behalf, mm -hmm. uh, and also mm -hmm. you, we, um, I think we can, you know, we would be within our, our discretion to, to, to overlook that. Yes, appreciate it. Um, we cannot entirely overlook the 16C matter, um, but again, we could wait. Do you have any, did you, um, uh, we, we've gotten cards from other, the other nearby institutions. Is this St. John Cantius? That's, that's, that's holding out here? Oh, it goes to Springfield? Yeah. To the diocese? Yes. Okay. It was, it was mailed down to the diocese uh, as the property owner. All right. The ABCC will accept if they were to go to the post office and get the proof that it was delivered. Which is what I... will never pick up the green card. Excuse me, sorry. Okay. Which is what I intend to do, just okay. based, based on that information. All right. Well, they're not here today. No. And I think that we can take that as evidence that um, they do not consider this to be detrimental to their spiritual activities there. And Mr. Rosen, for the record, I will, uh, I will uh, sit, or, uh, inform the commission that I did turn in a copy of the letter that was sent there with the, um, with the record, you know, with, with the address and everything. So uh, I think while I will provide the post office a proof of delivery, uh, I would uh, suggest that we, we have mailed this to the correct place. Okay. All right, well then I feel that we can act uh, on a contingent basis on that matter, too. I'll say you. Um, so my question would be, didn't the same process have to happen for the wine and malt, correct? Uh, or is that that was, no, no. The, the wine and malt, nothing has happened to the wine and malt. Um, I mean, you don't have to go to no, the religious institutions with that? No, that was just a change of manager. The wine and malt's been in effect for quite some time. Understood, but I'm saying when they went for that. Oh, yes. So they've already, might you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Plus it's downtown on a, on a street full of restaurants. Correct. So. You know, what are we waiting for here? But we still have to observe the law, the forms of the law. So that's all. And uh, sorry to belabor this point, but given not all. all that you said and all that we appear to have here, I, I would not. Um, uh, be averse to also acting on a contingent basis on that as well. Um, so, um, uh, do you have any other questions for Mr. Gove or Mr. Pikutowski? I don't. I mean, um, earlier in the conversation, tracking numbers from FedEx and things like that, you could tell exactly where it is, but. We've, 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 we have asked for that information. Yeah, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you've covered all of these. It sounds like you did, so. Okay. And getting back to the matter of the special restrictions of Chapter 109, any, any further thoughts or questions here? 
Um, will there be any tapas? Well, tapas is a word that typically defines the size of a plate. In that perspective, yes, we'll be very happy to offer a number of tapas. Mm -hmm. Um, then, um, we have everything else we need here for this. Oh, um, this is a public hearing for this application. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this application? Seeing none. Um, I will move to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, all right. Again, I'm the uh, the uh, terms of the uh, special act appear to have been met here, so I am inclined to um, to uh, grant this license uh, as submitted, continued on. It's not a motion yet. Uh, I'll receive the other documents. Okay. Um, there is there is the possibility that um, uh, points may be raised subsequent to this hearing about the uh, applicability of, of Chapter 109 to this. Mm -hmm. But for our purposes today here. Um, uh, I will make a motion uh, to um, grant the application for a new annual all alcohol restaurant license per Chapter 109 of the Acts of 2016 for um, Acts of 2016, sorry, for Rias LLC, DBA Vita Tapas at 7 Strong Avenue, and to um, uh, approve Form 43 to be issued to the ABCC. However, such uh, the uh, issuance of such license shall be contingent upon the receipt of original documents from the licensee required for this, as noted in the record, and also the um, uh, confirmation that, um, that the uh, uh, requirements of 16C regarding no detrimental effect on nearby educational and spiritual institutions are demonstrated. So um, that is my motion. I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, where is Mr. Suarez? Is he in Spain or Brazil? I believe he may be on traveling back from Spain at the moment. Um, okay. I know he was in Spain for the last three weeks or a portion of uh, the last three weeks. Uh -huh. I, I know we were not able to reach him via email today uh, to find out what that tracking number was. Okay. So. All right, then um, you will get to Cindy. Absolutely. Those things mm -hmm. right away. That's um, uh, we would expect only a reasonable amount of time to elapse here before such documents are submitted. And for some reason, there is some, uh, some delay that uh, I would consider three weeks to be unreasonable. Um, does that sound like a time frame for you? Yeah. There's some reason why this cannot be completed as far as the uh, paperwork here within those three weeks. Um, please let us know, and uh, we will uh, discuss this, you know, what we do in that case. So, Absolutely. And uh, that is all. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you.
can stretch beyond that. And um, the or same day of, even if, just so we know. Yeah, yeah, see. let us know when you get it, but if, yeah. if it's, it's gone three weeks, we've yeah. not gotten it to uh, snow. Item number 13, application for change of management directors for the trustees of Smith College. Um, I want to let you know that they probably are not here because they already changed, requested the change of manager. It was approved. It was sent back from the ABCC because their trustees had changed. And, because, oh, and it's right. complicated because it's... Um, a non-profit educational institution, so yep. it's not the same. So we finally worked it out with them. They have all paperwork in, and now it's a change uh -huh. of directors and change of manager. Right. Alan talk, and I talked about this, so, okay. All right, so um, we still need a thing. The, um, apparently, um, a license holder, well, as you know, a, a license holder changes their um, directors, corporation. Let us know and submit all that. We have to prove the change and all that. Uh, a big old college like this, they're always changing their trustees. Believe it or not, we have to do it. So uh, they have submitted apparently um, information regarding the um, trustees and all that, and they are all um, permitted under the laws of the Commonwealth to act as teachers. No, the list of, of trustees. Oh, okay, great. Um, the, um, I guess you're just dotting our eyes and crossing the teeth. Just the names, the directors, they're all, they're all. They're all there, and then they had to match what the state has in the state. Okay. The okay. Article 4 of the it's called something else. All right, so they, they match what the state has. All of the OR documents are in here. We have a list of trustees here who appear to be eligible to hold a license. So uh, I will make a motion to approve the um, change of manager and directors, which we already approved. Manager, we already approved that. Um, so I'll renew that approval. And now the directors and trustees of Smith College <coughs> and Form 43 is be submitted to the ABCC. This motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I will sign the form. Okay. Item number 14, Divas Nightclub request to retain license temporarily. Hi there. Hi. Identify yourself for the record. My name is Lori Conti. Okay, and um, Hi, Lori. Hi. tell us what is on your mind. Um, I would like to um, formally request and um, retain of the license temporarily until I sell the license uh, to someone that um, would be interested in it. When did you stop serving? Uh, we have not. We, we are you are, still? We're still in business until October I 31st. I stopped a couple weeks ago. No. no, no. Tell, tell me, when are you, when are you in the um, our, our last uh, official date, uh, or our official date is October 31st, uh, the weekend before. So, um, what you're saying is you anticipate some lapse of time in which you won't be operating the license after October 31st before you're able to transfer it to find a buyer, correct? Correct. correct. And you would like some leeway yes. in order to accomplish the sale. Exactly. And uh, how long do you anticipate? I don't know. Um, 
I have two people that are interested. Um, unfortunately, um, the current landlord is not getting back to them. They would like to retain the space and the license, but he has not returned anybody's call. No surprise. Um, it's uh, ES. Uh, okay. So the. Um, so the new, the, the, they're trying to work with someone from the old Hinge um, location. Um, the, the gentleman that I spoke with, his name is Jason Newton um, out of Worcester. He's partnering with someone from Chicopee that is in bar and restaurant. He was at Hinge? No, no, no. They're talking about the space. They're just oh. trying to. Oh, I see. Retain oh, 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 that oh, oh, I'm sorry. To utilize sorry. the license. I got it. Okay. Yeah. But that is apparently uh, a big project because uh, they stripped everything in there. So they're trying to get numbers to see if it's actually going to work. I got it. Okay. All right. Uh, you would have to renew the license at renewal time. Okay. A renewal in order to keep it. There's there's no way around that. Sure. Uh, but for my part, I don't see any problem in granting you a reasonable amount of time in order to um, uh, make a business sale of this. Do you have any questions? Do we have a standard amount of time before we consider something a pocket license? We do not. So it's in our discretion. Okay. Uh, in the past, we <coughs> allowed somebody to have a license they didn't operate for eight years, <laughs> which is bad on us. Yeah. Uh, so, but we're not going to swing the other way and, and make life difficult for you because okay. we made a mistake in the past. So, I, um, uh, I would say uh, six months is uh, is that is that a reasonable time frame from your point of view? It is. It is I, from mine. I, I I honestly don't know. What I'd like to ask is if there is any concern or some a process that's taking place, I'd like to revisit it in six months. You may. You okay. can come back to us, and if you think that there's a um, uh, concern before that, you just want to get ahead of it, you can come back to this meeting at any time. Just tell Cindy. Are we, can I just ask, are we saying six months from October 31st when it closes, or six yeah, months yeah. from today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six yeah. months. But you'd have to renew. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Your thoughts? No. no, I was just going to say something along the same lines. That's all. That's all. Okay. But you know that would that would give you through the end of April. Yeah. So. I, uh, I've I've told Cindy we're we're looking for buyers. I uh, have it on the market uh, through a realtor. Um, like I said, I have two inquiries. Uh, one a little more serious than the other. Um, we're trying to work with the people wanting to come to Northampton and try and find space that can accommodate something of our license. So mm -hmm. it's a little challenging right now. Is this a restaurant license? I think it's a club license. It's a club license. <coughs> so a quick question no, no, just no. for you. No. It's a cool liquor license uh, under. It's not, it's not a club. It would be a club. It's not. Although it's called a nightclub, it's not a club. Oh, it's a GFP, maybe? General huh? I don't it's a general. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just a quick question for you. Um, knowing that you're having trouble with your current landlord, is there anything, I mean, I don't know the terms of your lease. I guess I was going to tell you, maybe look at your lease and see if there's any problem with subletting and renewal options and things like that, just to get. Um, the last time I spoke with my current landlord was over a year ago, and he bought the building from the original person that I had the lease with, um, with, uh, um, Is it Ed Kamansky? With Ed, yeah, and Matt Petomia. And, um, uh, they were very agreeable to the, the climate and worked with, worked with me on, on, um, terms. Uh, I, I don't get that from Eric. In fact, the last time I talked to him, he said we were very undervalued as far as rent. So going beyond my lease would probably put me in a financial position sure. not even being able to afford that. So, and, and 
I've asked, I've, I've tried to communicate with him personally, and he hasn't addressed any of my concerns. So I, I don't anticipate going beyond October 31st. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to get some time to just get the sure. stuff out of the premise that's mine, and he hasn't returned my calls or letters. So. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> good really luck. Much. Um, please come before, back before us if things are looking, you know, really bad or really good. Yeah, I, know. I appreciate that and, very uh, much. We will, uh, we will certainly uh, wish you the best in, in trying to figure this out. Can I suggest something? I don't know if you've spoken with the economic director of the city. He might have some leads on people who are looking for licenses. I'm okay. not sure he does works with small businesses. He works with people who are looking for. If you want to call me, I can put you in touch with him. I would love that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, review and approval for minutes of July 28th. Um, okay, fine. Sorry. We will move, move along then. Uh, any new business for us? Okay, none. Hearing none. Uh, I move we adjourn. Second. In favor, aye. Oh, I have new business. Okay, sorry, we're sending you adjourn. Sorry, we have time. Say okay. it, we adjourn too fast. <laughs> Quick draw, draw. That's right. What's up? Okay. Um, issue one bar and grill the I worked with Renata from the ABCC today because the bank is the bank called today the attorney from the bank and he wanted to know about the same issue as Divas is having they want to be able to continue having their license for as long as they need to be able to sell the license. They have some people who are interested in it, mm -hmm. and the business has been closed for a little while, but they want to be allowed because of the pledge agreement. Both owners of one bar are aware of it, and I have no trouble getting in touch with them. Um, they both respond. Lauren and Matt both called me today. Mm -hmm. So um, they are just asking to have your consideration letting them hold the license until they can sell it also. When did they stop service and alcohol? I don't have the exact date. It's probably been a couple months. They did have a sale and it fell through. Right. I banks. remember that right away. Would you ask them to come to us at the next meeting? One of them? So would you want the, that's what I was confused on, the, the attorney from the bank wants to be the one to come. He couldn't come today, he'd be happy to come. In. He's not the licensee. Uh, the bank is not a licensee, except very technically. Right. What would the bank tell us? Well, I advised him that he would have to have proof um, of receivership before he could speak on behalf of selling the license. Mm -hmm. Does he have it? Not yet. They're, they're hoping that the owners can sell, I think, but the bank is actually working on it now. So the owners are negotiating for the sale of this. The bank just is standing there waiting. Uh, I, think, I think it's actually moving toward the bank negotiating at this point. It's like really? within this past week, it's been moving toward that from what I understand. If that's the case, I just like whoever it is attempting to move this license to come before us. So if it's the bank, fine. If it's, you know, if it's Matt and. Um, I'm betting one of them would come. They, neither one of them could today. None of none of the three could today. Okay. But All right. Then, you know, let us let us hear get an update from them at the next meeting. What do you think? I agree. <clears throat> okay. Um, along the same line, I wanted to let you know that I sent a letter out to both one bar and to the owner of the Clarion. 
expressing that just to remind them that renewal is coming and if they want to hold their license and renew it, they needed to come okay. forward and express the same. Okay. So they both received okay. letters. Um, well, it sounds like she'll renew the license for sure. That's Divas. Divas. There's three. Right. There's yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, Divas. Right, right. These so, two, though. Yeah. None of those two go back to the city uh, for re. No, they're, we're over okay. quota, so we would just lose them. So I'm confused. Didn't, didn't we just go to legislation and they granted five more? Specific yeah. ones. Understood, but now, I mean, I don't know. They're don't outside know. of the quota because they're under special legislation. Yeah. Yeah, the, the four that we granted outside of quota. The one that we gave, you were on when we allowed Eric to transfer right. license. Well, we took away the. Uh, I think I'm the one that we took away the we took away the license that was on Center Street, right? Because that is another peculiar thing. It was one of five seasonal alcohol licenses that was under a special legislative category, so it didn't it wasn't considered overboard. It didn't go away, but the license at the church, if we had then moved to to take that away from the licensee, it would have been over quota, it would have gone away because it wasn't in that own special category that it had. If uh, he hadn't transferred it down to what is now an operating premise, we would have said, it's a pocket license, we're, we're taking this one too. Right. But because we took away the one which wasn't over quota, we were able to reissue it, that's what it's an issue. Then these were four special licenses on their own. But anything that else besides that right now uh, goes away. Yeah. The Moose Lodge license went away. Um, that, went out. that was before your time. Um, but these two were too. I don't know if you want to read the letter that I sent. The letter that the attorney sent, or the attorney for the bank sent today. They are actively pursuing. Okay. Well, they can certainly renew it. Some issue come if it's the bank that's negotiating a sale, then they can come. If they're not actually involved in negotiating a sale, then that will work. So they're asking for time to sell yeah. this, but this is all one of the licenses that disappear. Yep. Right, so, so how can they sell it? No, 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 they can sell it. It doesn't disappear if they sell it. People oh, have been okay. selling licenses I got you. for okay. years while we've been over quota. Well, right. then you guys took it away. And I got you. Yeah. If, it, if it's not an operation, if it's not, if nobody holds it, and generally what happens is. It makes sense because why would anything be, it wouldn't be worth anything? To right. So, take Spoleto when Claudia moved out of his main ES development thing. Huh? Yeah, yes, yes. When he moved out of the ES development property. Um, he had already lined up the Irish Pump guys. Right. And so they just they changed some amount of money. We don't know what it is. They came before us, applied to have that particular license that previously belonged to Claudio. We approved it. They opened for business. That was that. 
Right. That's what's happened a lot. I don't care. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh. Um, and I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, we received from the Commonwealth a notice that Freedom Post 28 American Legion is, has a hearing on October 25th for permitting gambling on a license premise. So I'd just like to notify you guys when these come in. Okay. And it just goes in the file. Okay. That's it. Were there inspectors poking around the city again? Um, I guess. Okay. Justice never sleeps. I'll make a motion we adjourn. All in favor, aye. aye.